Welcome to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast. Robert Glasscock and Thomas Miller here, and we have a listener question about something <laughs> that is about one of the most relevant things going on in the chart today. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Robert. My name is Kyla, and I am new to astrology, but I discovered your podcast, and I love it. So thank you so much for producing such wonderful content. I find it incredibly informative. I had a question about transiting Pluto and Aquarius. I recently had transiting Pluto cross my ascendant in Capricorn, and that was super tough. So I want to look ahead and plan for the future. I have a lot of family members who have natal planets in Aquarius. Can you talk about how transiting Pluto and Aquarius impacts us if we have natal planets in Aquarius in our birth chart? All right. Thanks so much. This is such a great question, Kyla. Thank you for asking it, because if it isn't on everybody's mind who is astrologically minded, it should be. Transiting Pluto for the first time in our lives <laughs> is entering or ingressing, in astrological terminology, Aquarius. And the ingress of a major planet is always important and significant. Everybody is afraid of Pluto for some reason, and I understand why, because it is associated with Scorpio and the process of death and rebirth. Now, nine times out of ten... The death and rebirth will be figurative. I have had Pluto transiting my first house for the entire duration of Pluto and Capricorn. This has been the best period of my life, totally. Pluto rules the deepest, most unconscious, and frankly, the most spiritual depths in everybody. So to the degree that you are in touch, truly in touch with yourself. And I know of no better way to do that than to study your natal horoscope. But to the degree that you're in touch with your true self, what you find with Pluto, it's a very slow-moving transit. These are beliefs and energies that are coming up to the surface from the very depths of the person. So what the transit means is a figurative death and rebirth process going on with the house matters where transiting Pluto is. Now, in my chart, Transiting Pluto is still in my first house, but it's changing signs. It's going into Aquarius, which actually is the second house sign in my chart. So for the rest of my life, Transiting Pluto will be going through my second house of self-worth. And that is the death and rebirth process that I need to be in touch with. And it's both ways. I'm 78 years old, so I am very conscious of death, the literal death. I am fine with it, but that's because of my life, what I've learned through astrology and metaphysics, which are, again, very deep energy processes is what we're going after here. Each of the planets in astrology represents a kind of energy. Sometimes they're in conflict, sometimes they're not, sometimes they're in harmony, sometimes they're in conjunction, which makes them even more powerful. But these are the deepest, deepest core beliefs that are coming to the surface, and they will, over time, transform your life, which, of course, is a key word that we're used to with Scorpio and Pluto, transformation, but that's what it means. So gradually, I am very conscious that in a figurative sense, I am leaving my past, in a figurative sense, behind me and embracing a whole new way of living, which is absolutely true for me. I think if you've listened to these podcasts, you, you know that for at least about the last seven or eight years, I have been consciously aware that I have never been this continuously happy in my life 
for seven years I've been aware of this. This is all due to metaphysics and astrology. So the deeper you are able to reach into yourself and think about what does transiting Pluto mean in this house where it's transiting or in relationship to an aspect that transiting Pluto is making. Transiting Pluto in my chart, for example, is going to be sextiling my natal moon in Aries for a long time. And the, the, my moon in Aries is in the third house of communications, which is how I earn a living, always have. <laughs> the moon is the public. So Pluto transiting in my chart, sextile, the public. Well, that has corresponded with Thomas Miller developing these podcasts and inviting me to join him in fun astrology and what he is doing with his life. So that has been a tremendous plutonic transformation in my life, you see. So I hope that gives you a sort of guidance in, in, in terms of thinking about Pluto. Don't be afraid of it. Think about it. Pluto is the destroyer. That's the so-called negative side of it. But everything dies. Everything dies. All forms die. The longest forms that we have here are the pyramids and the sphinx. The sphinx is even older. So those forms have lasted a long time. And in your own life, the idea of realizing, and I do, and I'm very grateful for it, realizing the plutonic effect in your own life, which is to bring up, hopefully, the most constructive scorpionic elements within you. And this has a lot to do. Scorpio, you know, is the natural eighth house ruler of, quote, other people's money, because it's opposite the second of your own natal chart, which is your money. But the second and the eighth have to do with self-worth. Your second house shows your self-worth and therefore how money fits into your life or doesn't. The opposite house, the eighth house, which is the Pluto house, the Scorpio house, and the natural wheel shows other people's self-worth. So if you are in a position to give value to other people's self-worth, then you're making constructive use of that Pluto aspect. Also be willing to let go of what is dying in your life. Sometimes it is true, and especially the older we get, Pluto will correspond to possibly a death or even more than one in your circle. Those are markers. You're meant to mourn them on some level. It just may be the death of an acquaintance or an old friend, or it could be of a family member or a parent who's aging and so on. But it becomes a marker saying, at this point in your life, Pluto is in some sort of strong relationship to your chart. Therefore, you will probably experience not only a figurative letting go of what is dying in your life, but also maybe a literal one. There may be a grandparent or a parent who is not in good shape or who is old and dying. And that's meant to make you aware of your own mortality. You will die too someday. So what are you doing with right now to make your life and the life of other people better? I think you just summarized and nailed that last point is my own thought on this is which side of consciousness or which side of awareness are we living? And I'll just throw my own example in here real quick that uh, when that beginning of Pluto entering Capricorn, Pluto had just crossed into my seventh house, 2007 and 2008, and it was in the last couple of degrees of Sagittarius, and it did a retrograde dance right there at zero degrees, sound familiar, and uh, Lo and behold, right there waiting for it in the seventh house is my Saturn. My second marriage dissolved during that time, very unexpectedly, too. I mean, I thought everything was great, and then all of a sudden, kind of the rug got yanked out from under me, 
that began the biggest transformation in my life, and everything I had known or been died. And I completely changed. I mean, it was literally a caterpillar to butterfly experience. The person who you are listening to today is not the person he was when Pluto was in the sixth house, ambling along, making no aspects. Would I have traded that for anything? <laughs> no way. So the pain of those years were significant. But what I am and who I am and what I'm doing today, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah. And it's fascinating to me, too, Thomas, how that, that death and rebirth aspect of the plutonic energy really how it worked in that situation because here what you're talking about is you know you're talking about a, a form of death you had a marriage and you loved this marriage so it had to have been incredibly heartbreaking to have it end and yet at the same time simultaneously with that it was the rebirth of thomas miller today and it started there because for your soul's purposes at that point you needed to be single because marriage was too much of a distraction from this work if that makes any sense. Oh, I've filled volumes of journal pages with that. <laughs> and, and man, isn't a journal a great thing to do at oh, different points in your life? Oh, I still do. And you're exactly right, is everything that I was up until then literally died. And you mentioned there were, I'm going to say, about 18 months there that I didn't care if I lived or died. That's also not, not atypical of a Pluto transit, because among other things, Pluto rules extremes. It can be extreme joy. I have to say, and this is not egotistical at all, but I have Pluto in my eighth house at birth in Leo, the sun sign, and Pluto trines, excuse me, sextiles my sun and trines my moon. So that whole Plutonic process is, has for me been a good one. But this idea of realizing that you're being reborn at the same time that these painful experiences of seeing things that you love come to an end or things that you once loved come to an end. Because for most people, as we go through life, the things that we love and the people that we love can change. I am always in awe of people who have had a 30-year marriage, a 50-year marriage, and I know these people. It's amazing to me, and I admire them. I couldn't do it. Anyway, I hope that makes some kind of a sense for Kyla as far as this Pluto transit goes. Don't fa I'll tell you something else. That I'm reminded of one of the, the Seth's books, Thomas, by Jane Roberts. In the first one, I think Seth speaks, he says... You are as dead now as you will ever be. And it's true. I read that originally back in the late 60s, I guess, when it came out. And I kind of understood it intellectually. And I thought, oh, gee, what a wonderful thing to say. It's like a Hallmark card. You'll, this is as dead as you'll ever be right now. But then <laughs> events in my life... Uh, for example, that first out-of-body experience that I had as a passenger in this car accident, which I've talked about, uh, those things began to show me that that's the truth. The very first, after that accident, I about a week later, just lying in bed, I had another out of a second out-of-body experience spontaneously, and when I snapped back into my body, uh, I, 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 the first thought that went through my head was, is that what death is? And I heard that's all it is. It's just not physical. So you begin to, if you are into this stuff long enough, I guess, and you're open to it, you begin to have experiences that people have written about for at least 4,000 years about out-of-body experiences. But now you have it personally. You've actually experienced it. It's not a dream. 
It's absolutely different from physical reality, but it certainly is adjacent to it. So it's a fascinating area that Pluto can deepen your own consciousness, your own awareness, and your own acceptance, I think, of life and and the natural process of birth, growth, decay, death, rebirth. And it's happening in everybody right this second. You know, I've, I've said over and over again, there's not one cell or tissue or organ in your body that was there seven years ago because we are constantly sloughing off dying cells and replacing them with new cells. As we get older, the physical ability to do that begins to decline just as the immune system weakens with age because it's been fighting off all these infections and viruses and so on for all these years. So it's a natural process, but it's incredibly enlightening if you're open to it. So I hope all of you will read as much as you can find on Google about Pluto. It's a fascinating transit. And thank you again, Kyla. Yeah, I think it reminds us really stark, straight up, which side of the coin are we living our life from? Because what Robert was talking about with Seth and his experience, mine was, I was dead. I was just consciously dead, living out of fear. I wasn't seeking intuitive pulses of direction it just the whole thing so saturn and pluto sitting right there together had to kick me in the head to get me to wake up well once you're awake then what does pluto represent it represents power it represents transformation now not for yourself but out in the world and it represents this tremendous amount of strength and progress now so as pluto enters aquarius if you look at what robert and i are doing aquarius rules astrology so you look at the power of the conscious effort that we are doing and a lot of things you don't hear behind the scenes as we talk about where we are we'll put a chart up and look and square up and see are we moving in the direction that this chart indicates we should be because we want that powerful pluto behind us as it moves into Aquarius for the next 20 years, that hopefully we can continue this work only amplified now by Pluto's power, not by its tearing down destructive force. All right. Yeah, great question, Kyla. Thank you so much for that. And check out our show notes. I'm getting ready to revise the show notes. We haven't done it quite yet. Probably will not have by the time this comes out. But at some point anyway, there will be stuff in the notes of where you can find everything and uh, hopefully we'll make it even better than it was so thank you guys for listening so much we'll see you next time on old soul new soul astrology podcast with robert glasscock